I'm doing this particular fan Q&A from the, uh, so the Savoy Casino set on our, on our Vegas set in Santa Clarita. Um, this, uh, this studio, Santa Clarita Studios, has just been kind of taken over by Vegas. We, we have half of it transformed to our needs, even though we share it with other productions like uh, Justified and um, Wizards of Waverly Place, we're working here a little while ago. Um, uh, we've kind of got the lion's share and the run of the place to ourselves. So, welcome to the Savoy Casino for this very special fan Q&A. You're going to hear crew members, and people are going to be walking in and out, and you're going to hear other people talking because this is a hot set. People are preparing it for the next scene that shoots here tomorrow, so um, this is, you know, we're at work. I'm also going to be doing uh, a walkthrough for you. There's going to be like a video where, you know, we're going to walk it right through the... the set here, the Savoy Casino set, right onto the street. You're going to see it without the visual effects. You're going to see the green screens, and actually one green screen is covered in like, you know, black plastic bags at the moment to protect the, the greenness of it. So, um, uh, we're going to be doing that as well, and uh, you might be able to watch it here, you might be able to click on another video and, and watch it, um, but we're going to be doing that for you while we're here. So, on to the fan questions. Uh, obviously thrilled that you guys uh, responded to our techie and uh, have offered us some great fan questions, so let's get into those. Um, Seti Lu, I hope I'm saying that right. Hi, Seti. Uh, I've seen you uh, very active on Facebook and Twitter, so um, thank you for asking questions. Um, when I worked with Michael Imperioli, did we ever talk about the last episode of The Sopranos? No, we didn't, because even though I heard what happened, I'm not all caught up with The Sopranos yet. There's still a couple of seasons I haven't watched. Um, shame on me, so um, I'm going to have to catch up with that and then call or email Michael and ask him to explain to me because I know that it was left on a very ambiguous note. Um, as a child, did I fight with my brother? Yes, I did, but I was also eight years older than my brother, so I usually had the upper hand. However, now he's uh, 32, six foot two, and has about 50 pounds on me, so he's he's... He's a big kid, and I no longer pick any fights with my brother. I'm very, very nice to him. Um, and what scares me? Oh, I think any time my family is in danger, or any time I'm away from my family and they could be in danger, or any time something terrible happens in the world and my family is close by or at risk, that's what scares me. Um, Frank Belasco, hi Frank, um, one of my one of my greatest fans. Does my son become interested in the types of characters I play, like dinosaurs for Terra Nova, cowboys for Vegas? Yeah, he does, he does. But you know, at this point, I can't really work out whether he thinks that every every kid's parents are actors and have to go off and to Australia and to Los Angeles and do stuff or whether he's just um, kind of bored about, with the whole thing and it's just like dad doing another show. Um, so I can't quite work that out. The other thing is he doesn't get to see everything I do either. Not everything I do is suitable for him. Vegas isn't really suitable, so he's seen a few clips and stuff, but you know, some of the scenes of Vegas can get quite intense. So um, he likes cowboys. He's never been super into them. You know, kids these days, that's a, cowboys are a tough sell. Uh, but yes, he was really into the Terra Nova dinosaurs, but he had been into dinosaurs for a few years before that. And actually, he came out to Australia with my wife when I was there, and I took him to the Australia Zoo, and he fell in love with Tasmanian devils at the Australia Zoo. So he's all about, that was over a year ago, and he's still talking about the Tasmanian devils and what we can do to save the Tasmanian devils, uh, which is very sweet. Petra. Hi, Petra. How are you? Uh, again, another really active fan on my, uh, all over my media. Jason, do I have any news or updates on Two Appomattox? No news or updates at the moment. I'm not a producer, so I'm not involved in all of the pre-production stuff. As you know, I'm really grateful for the videos uh, that you guys made in support of the project, um, but I do not have any uh, progress report as yet, except to say that things are status quo. Um, uh, the finance has not been fully raised yet but the project is still very much in play and um, broadcasts and networks are still showing a lot of interest in. 
Nicole Jean, Jean Ann Rosima Tendam. Tendam? Nicole Jean Ann Rosima Tendam. That's a name. It's a great name. Can I give you any details on what's going to happen between my character and Mia in season two of Vegas? I don't think it's quite ready. We're quite ready to talk season two yet. Um, you know, we need to finish shooting season one first. Um, so I don't know what's going to be happening with Jack and Mia next year, but I do know that things are really, they really get shaken up um, this season. So you don't even need to worry about season two because season one is, is very intense and, and very cool. So um, there's going to be lots for you to think about and talk about. It was quite a bit of a preamble leading up to them getting together, but now they're together and, you know, the Romeo and Juliet part of things are about to kick in and um, there's going to be a fly in that ointment, I can tell you. Alma Stonehucker, what was my inspiration to become an actor? Uh, I, you know, I don't think it's ever any one thing, um, or certainly not my story. I loved Star Wars from an early age and I knew that I wanted to be doing whatever those guys were doing. Um, I knew it wasn't quite real, but it looked real to me, and I thought, I just want to do that. I just want to be in that spaceship. I want to be being cool like those guys, and I want to like shoot stormtroopers and that. So um, I'm not sure if, that's obviously not exactly the way things have gone, but it certainly got my imagination going in terms of role play. And I used to act out little plays myself in, in my living room by myself, without an audience. Um, but I was already playing characters and doing stuff myself long before I actually knew that there was a profession known as acting. Um, and then later, my mother encouraged me, uh, and several, she just take me to the theater a lot, so um, there was that. And also, um, uh, in school, I did some school plays. I had a great English teacher called Martin Kelly, who directed me in several Shakespeare plays over the years in school. Uh, and and just a general love of uh, theatre, film, television, and appreciation for for acting. So um, it was it was a bunch of things conspiring together. And I suppose also the fact that I got a big thrill out of doing it that was a big one. Um, Francesca Aseca. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Francesca Aseca. Aseca. Hi Francesca. I know you're one of you're one of my Australian fans. I remember you popping up on Facebook when I was in Australia. Uh, what is the one thing I miss about Ireland? Well, I don't miss just one thing. I miss lots of things about Ireland. Um, obviously, I miss my folks. Uh, my sister lives there now. I, li I miss my friends. I have several very very good friends who still live in Ireland. Um, I miss. I miss the trips out west, out to Connemara and down to uh, the Cork and Kerry Mountains in West Cork. Beautiful, beautiful places. I miss, um, I don't miss the weather. That's, that's one thing I do not miss. And th today is a, a very windy, blustery and rainy day in LA, uh, which very much reminds me of your average day in Ireland. So uh, I don't miss the weather at all. I miss, I miss the breakfasts. I miss the big Irish breakfasts um, and I miss fish and chips like greasy heavy mushy chips with fish or a batter burger or a batter sausage covered in like vinegar and salt um, can't get that here nobody does that here I don't even know if anybody I don't know it's, I can't understand why that hasn't taken off in the States other than the fact that it clogs your arteries instantly and you drop dead of a heart attack um, Elizabeth Wood What's more fun for me, filming a show about the present time period or the past time period? Um, I don't really know. It depends on the show. You know, there's some, like Breaking Bad is one of my favorite TV shows that's, that's set in modern times. But at the same time, I love, uh, I love period drama. Um, uh, I love futuristic sci-fi stuff. I've been in all three, you know, I've been in shows that are set in the past, present, and the future, so um, depends on, on the show. I know, I know why people ask me this, and I get this question a lot, because I have done an awful lot of period drama, or even time travel drama, um, so uh, 
that is fair to say, and here we are in a set, you know, that's supposed to be 1960. Uh, oh, actually, the show is 1961 now because we've had, we've had the holidays in the new year, so it's 1961 Vegas. Um, Dennis reminded me of that the other day. Uh, so yes, I'm in a show set in 1961. I've been in a show set 85 million years in the past, but also, I can't remember what it was, 150 years in the future. Life on Mars was 1973, 2008 to 1973. So yes, time comes into, has come into the last few projects I've done quite a bit. Um, but you know, one for the money was was contemporary, and um, so it doesn't. It's all about the story, you know. That's that's what that's what really matters. And, and the time period, or the time travel, is just a way of telling the story. And it's all a matter of whether that story is told well or not. Aaron Richards, what do I like most about living in the U.S.? That's a good question. I think it's. Um, I was going to say hamburgers, but that's the easy answer. Um, I think it's the fact that you know, I love cities. I'm I'm a city dweller. I, you know, Dublin, even though it's a small city and I grew up in the suburbs, I always loved trips into town. Uh, when I was a kid, I spent eight years in London before coming to the States. When I moved here, I came to L.A. Then I spent, still spent a lot of time in New York. Um, but I think it's the fact that I can go from New York to Boston to Philadelphia. I still haven't been to Chicago. I still haven't been to New Orleans, um, San Francisco. L.A., which I've grown to love quite a bit over the years. Um, all these great, Las Vegas, all these great towns without leaving the country. And uh, I, just, I just think that's very cool. I mean, in, in Europe, obviously, things have opened up a lot. And with the EU and uh, passports and such, you can move fluidly within the borders. But in America, you can, you can go from one end to the other, one city to the other, and you just have to flash a driver's license. I just think that's really cool. Uh, Mary Dot Hofecker Pinto. I know I'm getting all your names wrong, so I'm just apologizing now. Uh, what would be my ideal movie or TV role? Ah, uh, hard to say. Um, hard to say. I, you know, having done Band of Brothers, I kind of, I kind of think that was a great project, and I'm really glad I was a part of it, even though I was a small part of it, because. Um, that's kind of one of those, you know, projects of a lifetime kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I believe they're making sequels to Star Wars. I believe they're making episodes 7, 8, and 9, and uh, possibly even a live-action television series. So I'd be a fool if I didn't put my hat into that ring. So who knows? Ryan Lotanzio, what did you do during winter break? I went back east where I live in, uh, in Connecticut and it snowed so I went sledding with my family and I ate a lot and I built a lot of fires. I like, I like building fires and sitting by the fire and relaxing and reading and watching TV. Um, but now I just had a lot of really nice family time and, uh, and we jumped around in the snow, made snowmen. Jessica Sapphire, how are my abs? Um, they, you know, they're coming back out to play, but because of the winter break, uh, they got a little buried. Uh, so we're we're just helping them come out again after after the holidays. That's what we're doing now. Thanks for asking. Um, all right, folks. Well, listen. Thanks. For, sorry I didn't get to all your questions, but uh, thank you for the questions. All the questions that were submitted. Um, uh, I always enjoy these fan Q&As. I'm really thrilled to have been able to do it here in the Savoy Casino. And um, we're going to be getting some other bits and pieces um, while we're here for you guys. Exclusive, all for you guys, just for jasonamara.com, Facebook profile subscribers, um, and uh, Facebook fan page likers. Um, please encourage your fans, to uh, your friends, to um, like the fan page and uh, my Twitter followers. So this is just for you guys, all exclusive stuff. So I'm thrilled to be able to do this for you. As you know, I value uh, very much, and um, I really appreciate your support. Thanks, guys.